This is the uh, Wednesday 6th of November. This is the non-calculator paper. This is the proper exam and it is 1 hour and 45 minutes long. Question 1. There is a list of ingredients for making chicken soup for 4 people. You have to convert this to making soup for 6 people. What you've got to spot first of all is the connection between 4 and 6. How do you go to it? Some of you would have spotted you can just times by one and a half, so times all of these by one and a half. Otherwise, if you half the amount for four people, which I've done here, and then you could just add it on, because half the amount, obviously two, add that on, that would be for six people. So have a quick look at what I've done, half it all and add it on. Uh, there's my workings, and there are your answers at the bottom. Three marks for that, quite nice to start the paper off with. Question two. Uh, scatter graph. Uh, plot this information on the scatter graph on, on another day 90 documents are checked for a total of 17 errors so you go to 90 which is uh, here and you go up to 17 which is there just be a little bit careful on the scale going up because if you notice it actually goes up in twos so to get a 16 would be two up and 17 is another two up um, what's the correlation it is positive because it's the trend is going upwards um, on one day 110 documents are checked Est estimate the total number of errors in these documents so what you've got to do first of all is you've got to draw a line of best fit here's my line of best fit a couple of things it does not have to go through this point here it does not have to go through there and if you're not sure what to do just follow the general trend and to check it make sure you've got roughly the same number of crosses on either side I think I have and this is something a lot of people don't do you've got to actually draw up from 110 which I've done there then draw across and your answer or well, the answer I got there is 18 if you do not draw this line you will not get the marks for it make sure it's done and there's your answers question number three uh, here's a triangular prism what's the volume to find the volume, you work out the area of the cross section. This is the cross section here, because it's the same all the way through. So that's the triangle. The area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So three times four, which is 12, divided by two is six centimeters squared. Then you times it by the length. So six times 20 is 120 centimeters cubed. You do get one mark for writing centimeters cubed, because you notice there is not a unit there for you so that is worth one mark even if you don't know the answer right centimeters cubed you will get one mark question number four I'll leave that there actually in case you want to see what I've done question four coming up a um, little bit of algebra to simplify it what I've done I was zoom in so you can see what I've done on each one with the top one here simplify I've um, identified my like terms so I've noticed there's two x's there and there's three x's there. They're both positive, so add them together, so 5x. There's a negative 3, add 8, which is a positive 5, and there's a 4y just there. Um, I always, when I write this, you could put them in any order. Put the x's first, then y's, because it's alphabetical order. Then you can just put your normal numbers at the end. Uh, next one, factorise fully. To factorise, you have to find out what is common in both 9xy and 9x, sorry, 9x squared and 6xy. Uh, 3x is common in both of these, so 3x goes on the outside of the brackets. 3x times what is 9x squared? Well, it's 3x again, because 3 times 3 is 9, x times x is x squared. Um, and 3x times what is 6xy? Well, 3 times 2 is 6 and x times y is xy and you'll note it's a negative there, a takeaway, so it has to be a takeaway there as well. If you want to check that answer, if you multiply this bracket out you will notice that you'll get, like I said, uh, 9x squared take away 3 to the 6xy. So you can always check you've done it right. Expand that, just set it up like that, so 4x add 8, relatively simple. Uh, expand and simplify, a little bit tricky, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Some of you are taught the foil way, which is your first, outer, inner and last. And that's kind of what I've done there with a funny face and it comes out like that, which you've got to simplify. Uh, if you want, you could set it up like this in the grid method. So x take 5 goes here and x add 3 goes down there. Then you just multiply in here. So x times x is x squared, x times minus 5 is minus 5x, 
x times 3 is 3x, and x um, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Simplify that to your x squared. You've got a positive 3x and a negative 5x. This is where a lot of people tripped up. That goes to negative 2x and negative 15 at the end. Question number 5. Uh, Jane has a packet of seeds. The probability that a seed will grow is 0.75. What's the probability the seed will not grow? Well, it must add up to 1. So I've just shown my workings there. 1 take 0.75. But the answer is 0.25. Uh, Jane plants 200 of these seeds. Estimate the number that will grow. Uh, well, the probability that they will grow is 0.75. So it's 200 times 0.75, which is 150. You might recognise that 0.75 is 3 quarters. So it's like finding 3 quarters of 200, which is 150. Question number 6. Uh, transformations. Translate shape A by the vector minus 3, 2. The top one goes across and the bottom one goes up or down. Because it's negative 3, it shifts this way, 3. So I've moved this point here, 1, 2, 3. And the 2 means it goes up or down. Because it's positive, it goes up. So it goes across 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and finally 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Draw your crosses, then connect them up, then that's one mark. Next one, describe fully the single transformation that maps Q onto R. Okay, how have we gone from here to here? There are three marks available for this, and this is what you must write to get them. If you, wrote, if you write the word rotate, you'll get one mark. If you write 90 degrees anti-clockwise, which is going this way, or 270 degrees clockwise, which will take you around here. Either way is fine. I think 90 degrees anti-clockwise is more obvious though. You'll get one mark for writing either of those. And you must state what point is it is around. It is around point naught naught. And what that means is where do you rotate it from? You put a bit of tracing paper on, sketch round shape uh, Q, which I'm just doing very briefly there. If you put your pencil on naught naught, which I've done, then rotate it you'll see that it comes out at point R, near enough. So that's the point of rotation, naught, naught. And that's how you get three marks. Uh, next question, question seven. Um, Rita is going to make some cheeseburgers for a party. She buys some packets of cheese slices and some boxes of burgers. There are 20 cheese slices in each packet. Uh, there are 13 burgers in each, uh, t sorry, 12 burgers in each box. She buys exactly the same number. Right, so what I've done is cheese here. She buys it in things of 20, so 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Burgers, she gets it in boxes of 12, so 12 there. Um, she buys exactly the same number of cheese burgers, of cheese slices and burgers. How many packets does she buy of each? Well, 60 is the lowest common multiple. Um, so she buys three packets of cheese and she buys five packets or boxes rather, of burgers. So three and five, that's where they come from. Um, she wants to put one cheese slice and one burger into each bread roll. How many bread rolls does she have to use? Well, she's getting 60 cheese slices and 60 burgers. She wants to put one of those in each. She's got to get 60 bread rolls. Question number eight. Uh, nasty one, this. Um, work out the perimeter, uh, give your answer in centimetres. Okay, what you've got to spot here, first of all, it, I, it's horrible with all this algebra stuff, but uh, it says here, angle ABC is equal to angle BAC. So what that's telling you is that it's an isosceles triangle because that and that are the same. And because it's an isosceles triangle, that means that this length here, 3x minus 5, must be the same as 19 take x. So that's what I've written here. 3x take 5 equals or is the same as 19 take x. And you've got to solve this equation and it has unknowns on both sides. That's how I've solved it. It comes out to be 6 because I've added x to both sides to get rid of that. Then I've added 5 to get rid of that. Um, 4x is 24 divided by 4 x equals 6. So now you know x equals 6. You can go back up the top. 3 sixes are 18 take away 18 take away 5 is 13 uh, 19 take away uh, 6 is 13 and 2 times 6 is 12 13 at 13 at 12 is 38 centimeters and that is how you get your answer i'll leave the workings there in case you want to pause it and double check 
I might have to zoom in quite a lot on that one. Uh, question number nine. Uh, questionnaires. Not too bad this one, not too bad at all. Um, what's wrong with the question one? Write down one thing wrong with question one. The response boxes overlap. For example, if you're 15 years old, which box do you tick? Is it that one or that one? Because it's included in both. This one should be 16 to 25, and that should be 26 to 40. Uh, what's wrong with uh, question uh, two? First of all, how much exercise do you do? Well, there's no time scale. And also, a bit, some, and a lot, they're too vague. Um, some exercise to one person will mean something completely different to someone else. So, no time scale or vague response boxes. Um, design a question for Julia that she could use in her questionnaire. Julia wants to know how much time people spend exercising. It's not rocket science. Uh, how many hours do you spend exercising per week? So that's my time scale per week. And um, this is, you've got to be a bit careful here on the response boxes. As a naught, in case you don't do any exercise. More than naught, so naught plus to two hours more than two hours to four hours and more than four hours. The response boxes there do not overlap, you'll get your two marks. Question number 10 on the next page. Uh, the diagram shows the floor of a village hall and the caretaker wants to get some polish to polish it. Right, first things first, it's begging for you to find out the area of the floor and it's a compound shape so I've split it up uh, down here. This one is nine times eight which is 72 meters and this one is seven by six. Notice the seven there, look, comes from 16, take away nine, because that's what that would be there. So seven by six is 42. So what I've done is 72, add 42, is 114 meters squared. That is the whole area, 114 meters squared. Um, one tin of polish covers 12 meters squared. So how many tins of polish do I need to cover 114? What, what I started going up, one tin is 12, two tins is 24. I skip straight, straight to 10 tins. 10 lots of 12 meters squared is 120 meters squared, which is just enough. Actually, it's a bit, bit more, but, um, but you still need that little bit extra 10 tins because nine tins is not, is not enough. So 10 tins are required. Um, it's five marks. I expect you'll, you'll probably get one mark for that and one mark for saying how many tins are required. Uh, next bit. Um, you need 10 tins, they're 19 pounds each, so that's 190 pounds, but then you do get a 30% discount. So this is how I've worked out the discount. 30% of 190, well 10% is 19, 10% is 19, 10% is 19, so 30% is 57. So do 190 take away 57, gives you 133 pounds. And he's only got 130, so no, he is three pounds short. So there's four marks. The extra mark for this one, because it's got the star on it, look next to question 10, it's got that star. That means it's, uh, you get marks for the quality of your communication and the quality of your workings. It must be set out in a very neat, logical way like that. If you set it out in a messy way and it's very hard to follow, you will not get that extra mark for it, even if you get the correct answer. Because it says, does say, you must show all of your workings. Question number 11. Um, bit of a post office thing going on. Each day a company posts some small letters and some large letters and here's some information about it. On one day the company wants to post 200 letters. Um, the ratio of small letters to large letters is 3 to 2. So what I've done here, small letters to large letters is 3 to 2. Um, so there's three parts there, two parts there, so there's five parts altogether. So I did 200 letters divided by the five parts is 40. So each one part is 40. So there's, there's three parts here, so 3, 40 is 120 small letters and two lots of 40 is 80 large letters. First of all I worked out the small letters. It says it costs 60p each to post, so 120 times 0.6 is 72 pounds. And the large letters here, 70% uh, of them um, it says uh, is between 0 and 100 grams. So it says that in the question. So 0 and 100 grams, it costs one pound to post, checking up there. So 70% of 80 is 56, so 56 times a pound is 56 pounds. So if 70% uh, weigh that much, 30% it says here uh, weigh 101 to 250, which costs one pound 50 to post. Um, so 30% of 80 is 24, 
because 10% is 8, so 3 eighths is 24. So 24 times £1.50 is £36. So now what you need to do is add up 72, add 56, add 36, like I've done there, and you will get £164. That is how much it costs. There's five marks there. Um, I, you will get marks for how well you've shown your workings, but if you want to know the breakdown, you probably get one mark for getting um, one mark for working out this bit over here, the ratios. You'll get another mark for working out how much it costs to post the small letters. You'll get one mark for 56, one mark for the 36 pounds, and one mark for the final answer. Only if it is crystal clear. If you do not make it clear, you will not get the marks. Question number 12. Uh, on the grid, draw the graph of y equals 3x add 2 for the values of x equals minus 2 to 2. People get so confused at this. Um, you've got to draw your own bit here. Right, x from minus 2 to 2. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Some people draw it from minus 3 to 3 because they see it in the books. RTFQ, read the question and see what it clearly says. Uh, the graph is 3x add 2. So, so always start from the positive end because it's easy. 3x, so 3 twos are 6. Add 2 is 8. Uh, 3 times 1 is 3. Add 2 is 5. 3 times 0 is 0. Add 2 is 2. Now you can either spot the pattern that it's going down in 3's or you can start working out the negative ones. It's up to you. Once you've done that, you need to draw your graph. I'll zoom out so I can get it all in. I'll briefly explain how I've drawn my axis for this. So you've got to draw it on your own. The x-axis goes from minus 2 to 2 because that's what it does up here. The y-axis goes up to 8 and it goes down to 4 because that's what it does here. You plot your points on and then you connect them up with a straight line. This must be done in a ruler. You'll get two marks for this and you'll get two marks for that if it is done neatly. Uh, if you do not connect the points up, you will not get a mark. If one of these points is clearly in the wrong place, like over here for example, you've done something wrong, go and check it. Question 13. Uh, it's a basketball team. This is a nasty question on the mean average. You'll need to remember that the mean average is the one where you add them up and then you divide by the number of whatever it is. The way I've done it is I've worked out, um, well, we're told that the mean score per game is 35 points when they play 10 games. So I've done 10 games times 35 points. It's 350 points they scored in total. Um, and I've shown how they've cal well, calculated that there. Now, we need to know how many points did the team score in the 11th game. We know that the mean average score goes down to 33, so that's there. We know they played 11 games, so that goes there, because here they played 10, here they played 11. But we don't know how many points they scored. Before it was 350, but here we don't know it's X, if you like. So what I've done is set, up, set myself up a little um, bit of algebra there. Um, multiply both sides by 11 to get x on its own, and x is 363. But you are asked to say, how many points did they score in the 11th game? Well, you've got to do 363, take away 350, and it is 13. So they didn't do very well. They must have played someone a bit better. Write down the reciprocal of five. Um, it's just one over five. If you're ever, ever unsure of what the reciprocal is, it's what you would times that number by to get it to equal one. So 5 times a fifth is 1, but a better way of just remembering it is just doing 1 over 5. If it's 4, it's 1 over 4. If it's 2, it's 1 over 2. Evaluate 3 to the power, I'll zoom in so you can see it, uh, minus 2. That's 3 to the power minus 2. The minus means we must work out 3 squared and just put, it, put 1 over it. So uh, 3 squared is 9, so the answer will be 1 over 9. And this last one was a little bit nasty. Um, put the answer in standard form. Well, 9 times 3 is 27. Uh, 10 to the power 4 times 10 to the power 3. Remember, add the index numbers, it's 10 to the power 7. So a lot of people put down it's 27 times 10 to the power 7. But of course, in standard form, this first number must be between uh, 1 and 9.9. Uh, .9. So it's actually 2.7 times 10 to the power 8 because it goes up one more space. So it's 2.7 times 10 to the 8. Question 15. Uh, solve the simultaneous equation. Um, I'll zoom out so you can try and see it all on. I hope it's big enough. Uh, what I've done, first of all, the x's and y's aren't the same, so it's a B plus level question. Um, I've got the x's the same, and I've done that by multiplying the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 3, and this is what you come up with. 6x add 8y is 10, and 6x take 9y is 27. Um, to get the x, get rid of the x's, I've subtracted, 
as I've shown you there. Um, be a little bit careful here. 8y take away 9y, 17y, because 8y take away 9y, two negatives make a plus in that case. That's where 17y comes from. 10 take away 27 is minus 17, so divide both sides by 17, you get y equals minus 1. Now, substitute minus 1 back in for y into one of the equations. Um, I've chosen this one by the looks of it. Um, so 3x add 4y is 5, it just comes from the top. Um, so 4 lots of minus 1 is minus 4. So 3x times minus 4, uh, 3x, sorry, minus 4 equals 5. I've just solved this, look, I've just added 4 to both sides. So 3x equals 9, so x equals 3. So the final answer to that will be x equals 3 and y equals minus 1. I'll leave that there, I hope that is clear. Question number 16. Uh, this is very nasty. Um, it's to do to with length and heights and ratios of them. Uh, it's a dragon, but I'm not really interested in what the object is. Right, it says here that the height of the small one is is 20 centimeters. It says that in the question. I know, see a little picture of it there. And the height of the big one is uh, 120. Uh, you've got to notice that that's six times bigger, and that's just for height. It's six times bigger. Now, for surface area, because height is just a length, it's in one direction. But because area is two-dimensional, it's in two directions, you've got to square uh, your six. So six squared is 36. So you're not timesing by six to get here now, you're timesing by 36 to get here now. In it, if it asks for the volume, you'd have to cube it. And I don't know what six cubed is off the top of my head. So what you've got to do is do 30, um, oh sorry, 300 times 36. Well, the way I've done it is three times 36 is that. So 300 times 36 is that. And that is the answer, um, 10,800 centimeters squared. Nasty. Question 17, A, B is a line segment. So A, B is basically a line. Um, a is one end of it, and there's the coordinates of it, and I've written them down here. The midpoint, which it says uh, uh, here, and it wants to know point B, the other end. So what I've done is lined them all up. So how do you go from 3 down to minus 2? From one end to the middle, you subtract 5. Well, if that's the middle, then you've got to subtract another 5 to get to the other end. And I've done the same thing with these two. Subtract 4, subtract 4, then subtract 2, then subtract 2. And that's your answer. Two marks. Question 18 is a cumulative frequency diagram. Um, before I even read the question, the first thing I did was draw on the median upper quartile and lower quartile because I knew I was gonna need it at some stage. And the very first question is esti estimate the median. It's 68 um, because the median is 80 people. So you go out halfway at 40 and you come down and you get to 68 and that's that. Uh, next one, uh, swimmer has uh, a swimmer has to swim 50 metres in 60 seconds or less to qualify for the swimming team. The captain says more than 25% of swimmers have qualified. Is the captain right? You must show how you got your answer. Well, it's set, the diagram shows that uh, 27 swimmers swam the 50 metres in 60 seconds or less. Let me show you how I know that. Uh, there's 60 seconds here. So what I've done, I've drawn up and across and it hits 27. So that tells me that 27 swimmers swam it in 60 seconds or less, and I put the C diagram. 25% um, of all the swimmers is 20 swimmers, because 25% of 80, because there's 80 swimmers, um, is eight, eight and four, 10%, 10 percent, 10 five percent, so it's 20. So um, yeah, the captain's absolutely right, because 27, who did swim it in 60 seconds or less, is more than 20. So yes, the captain is right. Um, you've got to put the data onto a box plot and let me just explain briefly what I've done. The medium was 68 that you worked out on the previous page. The least value is 28 which is there. The highest is 96 which is there. You've also got to work out the lower quartile and the upper quartile. I've done this on the page previously where I showed you, showed you I've worked it out. The upper quartile will draw, draw across at 60 and the lower quartile or the lower quartile you draw across at 20. There are my values for it, and there they are plotted on the box plot. It should look something like that. Let me zoom in so you can see it. Okay, next question. Question 19 is a probability tree. Um, I'll leave that there, but I'll read it out to you. Uh, the probability that John buys fruit is 0.7. So fruit is 0.7. That means the probability he doesn't buy fruit is 0.3. 
Vegetables is 0.4, so the probability doesn't buy vegetables is 0.6 because these must add up to one, and it's there for that one as well. You get one mark if you've drawn that tree correctly. Uh, with a probability tree, you've got to multiply cross. So as you can see here, he buys fruit, then veg is 0.7 times 0.4, which is 0.28. And I've done 0.7 times 0.6 for fruit, then no veg, and so on. Um, you'll get one mark if you get all of these scores, all of these uh, probabilities here. Work out the probability that John buys fruit uh, or buys vegetables or buys both. So at the top one, he buys both. On this one, he just buys fruit. And on this one, he just buys vegetables. So you need to add up these three numbers I've circled and you get 0.82 or 82%. But because uh, they've given it to you in a decimal, I would tend to leave it as a decimal. Question number 20. Uh, solve this. First thing is what I've done. I've multiplied out the brackets. So 4 times 8x is 32x. 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. And then I've multiplied both sides by 3x to get rid of that. So that gives us 32x take 8 equals 30x. I've added 8 to both sides to get rid of that negative 8 because it was annoying me. So 32x equals 30x add 8. I've taken 30x off both sides, so 2x equals 8, so x equals 4. I'll leave that there so you can see it. Uh, part B, write as a single fraction in its simplest form. First of all, you must get the denominators the same um, because you're subtracting here. The denominators are the bottom numbers. So what I've done, I've just cross multiplied. So I've crossed, I've multiplied these two together, then you do y add 3 times that, then y take 6 times that. So uh, 2 times y take away 6 is this over that times that, because we times them together. Take away uh, y add 3 times 1 is just y add 3, and the bottom stays the same there. I've grouped them together here, because now the bottom numbers are the same. Uh, we can just take away the top numbers. So I've multiplied um, uh, this one out, so that is 2y, uh, which is, well, 2 times y, which is 2y take 12. So 2y take 12, take away y, and it's take away 3. So that's where that comes from. Then you've simplified the top line here, so 2y take away y is just y, and minus 12 take away 3 is minus 15 over what you've got here. And by the way, this bottom number here is this bracket multiplied out. So y times y is y squared, 3 times minus 6, 3 times y and y times minus 6, and I've just simplified it here. So that is what you get for uh, three marks. Question 21. I apologise if I'm rushing, but the school's closing in about five minutes, so I've got to get through it. Y is directly proportional to the square of X, which is basically what that says. You've got to work out what, uh, what we call a constant, which we call K. So you write it, Y equals KX squared. When X is 3, Y is 36. So there's Y is 36. X is 3, because 3 squared is 9. So you've got to work out what K is. 36, 36 equals what times 9? Divide both sides by 9, so four, k equals 4. And k will always be 4 in this situation. So now you can work it out. Find the value of uh, y when x is 5. You write that out again. You know that k is 4. You know that x is 5, so 5 times 5 is 25. 4 25s are 100, so that is your answer. y is 100. Um, question 22. Nearly that. Um, find the size of angle ABC, ABC, which is this one here, um, in terms of Y. Okay, so we know this is Y here. Right, first of all, you've got to start working out some things here. What do you know? Well, this angle here, I'll draw that on, is always half the size of this angle here. Um, you can write that, angle D, it's angle D there, um, is Y divided by 2. And I write in Y divided by 2 because angle O is double the um, angle D subtended on the circumference. So this is always double that. So by definition, that is always half that. Uh, this angle here and this angle here will always um, add up to 180 because opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral equal 180. So that is A add C. So you've got 360 in the um, four sides. You're taking off 180 for that. It leaves you 180 left. So if we do 180, take away y divided by 2, you're left with b. And that's all it is. So angle b must be 180, take away y divided by 2. Because that and that add up to 180 because they're opposite. So 180, take away whatever this is, must equal that. Question 23. 
3, uh, negative enlargement. Uh, scale factor minus a half. Minus a half kind of mean it goes back in on itself and out the other side. Um, so round centre 0, 2, which is there. The way I do this, and I think it's the easiest way, as you see it's negative, it means we're going to go back through this point. How do you get from here to the uh, centre of um, enlargement? You go across 2 and down 1, 2, 3, 4. So kind of just half that. So you go across 1 and down 2 and that's where you get that point there, across one and down two. To, for here, you go across uh, two and down six, so across one and down three, and this one you do a similar thing and you end up there. You can also check it, because if you connect up uh, your points here, you will notice they all go through uh, the middle. So that one and that one, because they're the same, that goes through the middle. This one and this one here, that'll also go through the middle, and so will these two here if I've got that ruler on the point properly, probably there. So they'll all match up like that, so you can check your answers. Last one, question 24, vectors. Write an expression for O, N. So O is there, N is there, they want to know how you get there. Uh, the way I did this, and I think there's a couple of ways of doing it, but my way, well, I think it's the easiest way, otherwise I wouldn't do it that way. There's O, N. Um, right, to go from, I'm going to start off by going from A to B, and A to B is just B take away A. So I've written that, B take away A. So A to N, because it's only two-thirds of the way, because you're told about the ratios here, it's two-thirds uh, B take away two-thirds A. So that's how you get from A to N. So to go from O to N, you need to go up here, which is A, and then you need to do what we've done for A, N. So it's A, add two-thirds B, take away two-thirds A, simplify that, which gives you a third A, add two-thirds B, Factorise it. What's common in these two? Well, a third. So a third goes on the outside. So it's a third A, add 2B, and that is your answer for three marks. Right, last bit. Prove that OND is a straight line. OND is here, and I'm going to draw that on for you uh, there. Prove that that um, is a, a straight line. Don't write because I've just drawn it with a ruler, because you won't get any marks, and the examiner is probably a bit tired of marking the exam papers by now. Um, what you've got to do, OD... Um, is A add 2B, because it's A add 2B, and I've written that here. OD is A add 2B. ON, so from there to there, we've worked out what that is. It's a third A add 2B. So I've written that here. So this makes it a straight line because um, they both go in the same direction, that direction being A add 2B. Um, all, the only difference is that OD is three times longer, because that's a add 2b, but it's only a third of it, and the top one is just A add 2b. You can check on here again. A add 2b. Uh, that was your non-calculator paper out of, um, out of 100. I hope you did well.